Texas. And I moved to San Francisco in 1950. Uh, at that time, uh, the war was going on in Korea. And of course, they were bringing, uh, you know, ships in here to be redone. African Americans were recruited here by the War Department, by the military. And when the war ended, they thought African Americans were going to go back to Texas, go back to Louisiana, go back to Oklahoma and Arkansas. But when we stayed, uh, the Navy, the city, the planners were trying to figure out what to do with this unwanted, undesirable population. A lot of activity was going on I didn't know anything about. Because at that time they had a uh, uh, radiological lab here that uh, testing of, uh, you know, uh, bombs. They'd have ships out there and then, and, and, you know, in submarines. And of course, when they got ready to clean them up, they brought them to Baby Runners Point. We've been exposed to, to an, an unprecedented level of asbestos exposures, as well as other toxins, from a shipyard that's a Superfund site. What I think that Lennar was banking on was that the community would not be educated enough to know about asbestos and its impact. We have to wait for people to, you know, to die, and uh, that's one of the reasons why the situation is dragging on. All of that uh, material from the ships, everything was bad and went to the Baby Hunters Point shipyard. Lennar promised to monitor the health uh, exposures as it related to the uh, dust and the grading and development activities in the shipyard, which is one of the most toxic sites anywhere in the country. The symptoms of asbestos exposure can be very, very vague uh, and can take a long time uh, to surface. Uh, what's more important than the asbestos exposure is the exposure to toxic dust because people who are exposed to the tiny, tiny particulate uh, can have the onset of symptoms very immediately. There's some studies that show that when people are exposed to particulates uh, in the air, that it can uh, trigger the onset of asthma attacks and heart attacks uh, within about 24 to 48 hours. This came straight from the Navy, that the Navy actually had knowledge of asbestos and the damage that it would do 30 years before I even got to work, started working there. Not 10, not five, but 30 years long enough to know the kind of damage that asbestos does to the body. Lenore, as a corporation or anybody who works for them, should not be able to sleep at night knowing that somebody's children or grandchildren, you know, are going to develop a disease in their adulthood. And the impact that asbestos poisoning has, because it's so tricky, because it cannot be diagnosed immediately, um, they're thinking that they could get away with murder. See, you're dealing with liars, thieves, and hirelings. Most of these people don't give a damn about their people because if they did, they would challenge the lie based upon the history of redevelopment, Mayor Newsom in the Fillmore District, Lenar and cities all over this country have lied to communities, bankrupted communities, poisoned communities, and we're supposed to believe they're going to do different in Bayview Hunters Point? Give me a damn break. San Francisco Department of Public Health issued at least three notices of violation uh, to Lennar Corporation, but fell short of uh, demanding a, a, a complete shutdown of construction activities. And the health department admits we were exposed, but has to this day never stopped Lennar for one day from working out there and continuing that exposure. So we have now uh, a fight on our hands. Right now we have a case by, by a number of plaintiffs. If you want to see it, you can go right down to City Hall. It's a, a filed lawsuit um, against Lennar Corporation um, for um, uh, racism, um, for uh, polluting the environment, um, and specifically causing harm to the individual plaintiffs in the case.
The title of the first story that we that we ran about um, the activities of Lenore was called The Corporation That Ate San Francisco. You know, I kind of went down the rabbit hole of research and mapping out who this operation is, how it began in Florida in the 50s, and grew and grew and grew, and eventually I think has operations in over 20 states. And how it came to California, and, and why, which was because we were having a boom, in a real estate boom. When the military bases began to be released, that developers all across the country saw this as a, as a huge opportunity. Here were areas of industrial land that were either undeveloped or underdeveloped, you know, nothing much had happened to them. And I think right now, Lenar has control of over 770 acres in San Francisco. Well, you don't usually find what, that's almost the size of a small town, like, you know. You don't usually find areas of land like that lying around, and especially not in a peninsula like San Francisco where every last inch is, you know, is occupied and fought. fierce battles go on to do anything. Suddenly you have this area. So they were looking at those areas and they were collecting them. Mare Island, Hunters Point, Treasure Island. It's all over the country what's going on here in San Francisco. The only other place that a land grab was larger than San Francisco. And we haven't had no hurricane, not even an earthquake for 20 years. But the largest land grab in this country, New Orleans and San Francisco was second. All we do is supposed to build 1,600 houses. That's three and a half years ago. There's not one pad out there. And you hear a lot of things as a reporter. People are constantly making allegations, so we look into them. And what we were able to find was a pattern of broken promises, definitely on the environmental monitoring of the asbestos, both you know in the air monitoring and the, the watering. We found um, patterns of changing the, the original plan, like whether you're going to build rental housing or condos whether you're going to build 32% of, of, of affordable housing or whether you're only going to build 32% in certain areas. And it, it goes on. Lennar's track record doesn't live up to the promises. Lennar started promising this community a legacy fund of $31 million and reneged on it. Lennar promised affordable rental housing for this community and reneged on it. Lennar and the city wants to build condominiums and even a football stadium. So at the expense of this community's health and to fast track this project, Lennar agreed and sold the community on the idea that they were going to monitor the health of this community and monitor the dust and monitor the air out there. And from the very beginning of this development and the grading out there, Lennart uh, purposely, with intent, uh, did not monitor that dust out there. And so for nearly a year, this community was exposed to thick dust plumes of asbestos and other toxins. And to this day, uh, Lennar has kept digging and with the city's blessing because the whole aim was to fast track this project by any means necessary. In the fall of 2006, I started to hear a lot of concerns being raised, allegations that asbestos dust was being, you know, released all over the Bayview, which is obviously kind of a scary thought. Wow, here's a school. Uh, it was a, it's a K through 12 school um, that teaches um, kids from all over the Bay Area, many of them of color. It's, it's run by the Nation of Islam. The city tried to get them to move instead of stopping them off from pointing the kids where they're at. You know, we got several schools around uh, uh, the shipyard. Don't keep the kids inside all the time. Come on. They got to get out there. They got to run. They got to jump. They got to play. That's what vitalizes their bodies and their minds. Yet we're taking that at a risk because we don't know what's going on here. The thing that really struck me was there's a chain link fence and that's all that stands between it and the playground. So there were children kind of hopping, skipping, jumping on this playground. And on the other side, there were big heavy equipment that was digging and grading this hillside. 
And this was where the asbestos was allegedly being released. The Superfund site from the school would be about 25 feet because truly the entire area was contaminated with not just asbestos, but with heavy metals, radioactive elements. There's all kind of things in the soil itself. They were being exposed, even though Proposition 65 is a law in California that you have to warn people when you're potentially exposing them to toxins that are cancer-causing. Yet, Lennar violated all of those principles. This fence with this tarping is what they call protection. The mesh screening, we're still trying to figure it out because everybody knows that when the wind picks up dirt, it doesn't throw it to your ankles, it whips it up in the air. So the fence itself really is too low. It's mesh with holes through it. Asbestos fibers are so small that it literally takes a special piece of equipment just to see a fraction of a, of a fiber. A mesh screen is just what it is, mesh. It has holes, it's very porous. Back in high school when I was a senior, I uh, contracted asthma and that stopped me from doing my homework because I was living most of the time inside the hospital with asthma and skin irritations, bloody noses. Um, my grade dropped from a 4.0 student down to a 1.68. The asbestos doesn't normally cause nosebleeds, but we do know that the antimony does. We do know that the mercury and the lead in here does. We know for a fact is that, yes, there is a naturally occurring asbestos rock. As long as you're not messing with it, no problem. Until you start chipping into it. They weren't chipping, they were grinding. They were making it into a powder. My research found an email exchanges where it seemed that the developer didn't feel that it had to install monitors and then somebody at the Air District was like, well, no, there's a school right on the other side. Yeah, there's a school there. After they were made aware by the, actually by the Air District, who actually started noting and, by, and, and citing them, actual citations, you know, your monitor's not included. They put monitors out. What was the point in putting the monitors out if well, we don't even know how long before you actually, oh, forgot to put a battery in them. Lenar was fine. Uh, for violating the Air Quality Act. They were fined $516,000. The unfortunate thing is that they were fined $516,000 for 380 some odd days worth of non-monitoring. The Air District has the ability to fine them up to $25,000 a day, but that's like a slap on the hand. One of the things I found in the files was in an official for Lenar saying every day that we shut down the work site costs us $40,000. So then if you take the amount of days that they didn't shut down and think that it didn't cost them $40,000 every day and you, you, you add all that up, suddenly that half a million dollar fine doesn't seem so much. They agreed to pay the fine as long as they didn't have to admit that they did wrong. No, Lenar Corporation did not pay uh, for the property. Uh, the city and county of San Francisco uh, had to pay a dollar uh, for the property. Lenar got the property for free. <laughs> get paid. Get paid. Well, there is, they only put water here when somebody's around is around or somebody's going to come into the neighborhood. Yeah. But other than that, they don't, they don't cover their dirt even when they're moving dirt. You're supposed to be doing a job in there, keeping the, the dirt down with water, but they're not even doing that. In California, uh, developers are required to mitigate. They're required to, to wet down the soil so the uh, dust doesn't get in the air and so people can't be breathing asbestos fibers. Unfortunately, that's an OSHA standard for the workers who are working on site. It is not an uh, air quality standard regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States. Uh, so if you're a worker working on Lennar bulldozing, you are given a badge. And it's a, like a radiation badge. It records cumulative impacts of asbestos, and once you reach more than so many thousand fibers, you're not allowed to work there anymore because that's considered to be hazardous to your health. Um, 
that limit does not apply to residents who may live next to it. They can be exposed to it and there's no law against it. You may or may not be aware of the fact that on October the 13th, 2009, there was an asbestos level at HV 11, one of the community monitors, of 400,000 structures uh, per cubic centimeter. And again, the shutdown level is 16,000 structures per cubic centimeter, and the mitigation level is 1,600. This was 400,000. So these are, you know, the levels of exceedance. You would expect that it would be newsworthy, that people are continuing to be chronically exposed to toxic dust. We know there's asbestos in the dust. We also know that there are other substances that are not being talked about. My principal concern is lead. NAR funded uh, last year a big uh, measure called Prop G to redevelop the shipyard and put 10,500 units of housing on one of the most toxic nuclear dumps in the nation. Uh, the only thing really saving our lives and have kept us alive is the fact is of the ocean that most of the time the wind comes from the ocean and blows it away. So actually to tell you the truth, God been taking care of us. It certainly have not been the city. You know, I don't think any of this is um, hysterical hearsay. And I think that the problem with um, uh, being a minority community is that people have a tendency to say it's hysterical hearsay. It's not true, you don't have the statistics. But when we had the real statistics done, a lot of them were not even disclosed. They were so devastating. One can say that definitely, you know, it's not good to have dust that's not being controlled on a project. and. People will say, and you know, within that community, this would never happen in Pacific Heights. You know, this would never happen if it was the area where, you know, our top elected officials live. And if it did happen, certainly something would happen that would be, you know, more of a more than just a slap on the wrist. It's been a, a very upsetting um, experience working for people who have been victims of that asbestos, of the thick uh, sand and dust that uh, ends up on their heads and their, in their lungs, through their nose, through their ears. I mean, really upsetting. I mean, you know, I'm a discrimination lawyer. Um, I, I, I live on comparisons, all right? Give me a neighborhood like that where building went on, where they didn't clean it up immediately. Show me one. Las Vegas, there are all sorts of new development areas, okay? You're not gonna find one where they didn't clean it up properly. You're not gonna find one with community outrage because there's asbestos in the, in the air. You're not gonna find one. The one you will find is Baby Hunter's Point. Lennar has promised a lot of money, has bought a lot of public officials, community leaders, preachers, organizations with promises, and some have gotten resources to push this project forward. There's a history of the negation and the destruction of the health of the poor people in Hunter's Point, and this is the 21st century version of that 70-year legacy. So you've got an environmental catastrophe, you've got criminalization policies that are being implemented, all that's happening based upon this Lennar shipyard development. So we've got a serious fight on our hands.